Hello, hello. Hey. Okay, we're keeping our distance. Me and Ashel. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Ashel. If you don't know her, she is the oh gosh, what word do I want? Like the genius photographer oh behind Ashel Parsons photography. Um so she's here to teach us how to do some photography with our phones, because that's what we have with us now. Um, and then we're also going to leave you with a photography scavenger hunt challenge um, with some of the things that she's going to teach you today. So we'll give you some prompts to do that. And then we had talked about coming up with a hashtag, but we didn't yet. Yeah, we so if when we come up with a hashtag for how you can share your photos, I'll leave it in the description here. And then Ashel can give you some feedback on your pictures if you want. Yes. Um, so I'm going to step away from the camera now and let <laughs> Ashel take over. And then I will, as needed, either um, be cameraman for what Ashel is doing or her subject uh, yes. to teach you things. So bye. Hey, okay, so I'm just really going to kind of jump into it. Um, if you are watching live and have a quick question, throw it up there and I will try and address it. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to try and start from basics and this is pretty basic and then uh, just kind of jump in and really kind of share whatever I'm thinking actually in the moment. So first off, let's talk about composition and the rule of thirds. Uh, so let's move to a piece of paper. Okay. All right, you know the drill. Close your eyes so you don't get seasick in this business. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you go and I'll make sure you're all lined up. Yep, you're good. Okay, so the rule of thirds is this. Here is the image, the scene, where you're looking through the camera, your phone, it can be this way, that way, it doesn't matter. Rule of thirds is when you chop up your photo into thirds. So if you visually do this or, you know, put some lines on your phone, I'm sure there's an app that can do it. Um, but this is what the rule of thirds looks like. And what this helps you, it basically just helps you just helps you compose the subject in your scene so it's a little bit more visually pleasing. So this is the border of the photo and these lines, wow, this is getting a little messy. <laughs> Here, let's, let's redo this. Here, do you want a different is, color? Yeah, let's do, let's do that. Okay. We've got different colors here. Yes, way more technical than me. So rule of thirds. Okay, so your goal is to put your subject most likely, again, there's always rules to be broken, but in these cross points, you want these to be where your focus is. Um, and that can it can change with whatever image you do. So let's say you have a you have a scene. It's like a field, and like you've got a tree here and like a house here. And you know, let's give us some mountains. I know we're in Cersei, but you know. There's mountains. It's sugar love. It's sugar love. There we go. <laughs> so this is your scene. And then, okay, how would you frame this scene? So this is your whole scene. Oh, and there's like, you know, a lake over here, some more trees, blah, blah, blah. Well, I want to really focus on the tree in the house. So I would frame this just like this. Because right here, here's one roll or here's one line. So I put one tree or the tree on this line, on this third of the photograph, the house on this third, the horizon is down on this third, and then the mountains and, you know, top of the tree is up here on this third. So that's just a quick kind of glimpse at the rule of thirds in composition. So you want, this is a center point, as a cross point, so there's a focus there, there's a focus around there, and even right here. So even if they don't, okay, let's do this. Let's do another scene. This one is just a beautiful field and a sunrise. I'm a beautiful artist. Um, hey, I know what it is. <laughs> Even though your field looks like an ocean, but that's I know, fine. It does. <laughs> it totally does. We'll just call it the ocean and then the sunrise. Okay. Um, so even if it's just a plain scene, what you want to do is for these little points, you want to put the horizon typically either on the bottom third or the top third. So if this is the scene right here, 
I, the ocean is, you know, beautiful down here, but you don't need a ton of water. So in the photograph, so the sky and the sun sunrise is actually what you really think is the most beautiful. So I would frame it like this, where the ocean is at this bottom third, and then the sun and sky take up most of the image. Does that make sense? Or let's think of it differently. If you have a field of all these beautiful flowers, We'll just make these all flowers. It's just a huge field of beautiful flowers. And then like, you know, a blue sky with some fluffy clouds up there. Well, this time I really wanna focus on the flowers. So I would make the image look like this. So all these flowers are down here and it's just like a plain blue sky, but I'm really focusing on the flowers. So my horizon is now up at the top third of the image. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. We have D told us good morning. Okay. <laughs> hey. yeah, good morning, D. Yeah, okay. so if you're just joining in, Ashel, let me show you Ashel's face, is teaching us photography. We're learning right now about the rule of thirds, and she drew a lovely um, diagram for us explaining thirds. And if you have questions about photography specifically, drop them in the comments, and Ashel will join them. We'll join them. <laughs> we'll answer them. If you have an iPhone, you can turn this grid on oh, on your phone so that um, you can see the the grid. Put your phone under here, Ashel. So to do it, maybe we have to go to settings. I actually, don't, I should have looked that up. We'll figure it out and yeah. and um and make sure you know how to do it. Cause I have mine turned on and I love it. Okay. Okay. Um, Perfect. I mean, it's not on, on Instagram okay. or on Facebook live. Dang but. It, that would be really good to do. Okay. Okay. So now I'm going to switch over and use your phone. Okay. Okay. Now I'm holding her phone and I'm going to use Joe as the example. So let's do this. I'm just going to take a simple portrait of Joe and then I'm going to use the rule of thirds to show you. So I'm going to switch it around. Okay, Joe. <laughs> let's, here, let's, that's, there you go. I'm going to have you come over here. So it's just like this plain, well, not plain, beautiful background. Okay, so what I could do, if I'm actually wanting to get the full body of Joe, I would actually Wait, stick why would you not in the full, the full body. body. Okay, so really for a portrait, if you're just having one person in the image, Putting them right down in the middle of the photograph is great, but the rule of the rule of thirds still apply here, because yes, she's in the middle, but her head here I'll frame it. Her head and her eyes are up at the top third. So whenever you're taking a picture of a person, eyes are typically always the focus point. So yes, it's their whole body, but don't what you're really looking at and what's the main point that you're shooting, like the focal point is going to be their eyes. So wherever their eyes is, eyes are, are <laughs> put them at the rule of thirds. So she's up at the top and then her body's filling the rest. If I get in closer, same thing. So eyes still at the top and then her body fills the rest. And it's still so natural. So I know, it's still so natural. <laughs> so, so show them. Maybe show them wrong or like what yeah. some people would do. Okay, so some people would just do this. So her face is now, I'm trying to do this at the same time. Her face is now in the middle of the image. So you've got all this space up here that does nothing. Like it, it just is distracting because there's nothing going on. So I would bring it down so that now her focal point, which is her face and her eyes, is now at the top third. If you don't want all the rest of her body, we'll just get closer. And like, don't do this because all of the space up here is just nothing. So lower it so her eyes are at the top third. Does that make sense? And then uh, what we could also go on and touch on, um, since we're right here using a portrait of a person, look at the background. So yes, look at the person, frame them how you want them, but then also always keep in mind what's going on around the person. Make sure there's nothing super distracting. Here, come over here and stand in front of that. What? Distracting? Yeah. <laughs> so like, like taking a picture like this, like to me, this is just really distracting. It's like something's poking out of her head, you know, sometimes, but, sometime, not, in a cool way, but right? not in a cool, <laughs> yeah, but not in a cool way. 
So um, <laughs> definitely sometimes you can't help those distracting things. But in this situation where we have all this, we can help it. So move over just a little bit. Oh, right there. Now turn a little bit towards the window. So here we backed her away from the plant. And if we still want all this fun stuff behind her, just getting closer so it blurs out a little bit more in the background. Uh, iPhone's a little bit harder, but well, and in the the live, yeah, you can't. It doesn't. There's not as much depth of field, which we'll talk about in a second. But um, or we could do. Okay, go back to your other spot again. Since there's all this nice white behind, you can. <laughs> marks the old no. spot. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. So you could you could just stick her, I mean, honestly, with just a simple white background. To me, that's a little boring because Joe has all this amazing artwork. So I would definitely want to stick her with some sort of artwork in the way. So what I would do is probably stick her right there and then put her a little bit over on this side of the image, not way over here because we don't want to cut her shoulder off, but right about here. So therefore all around her head is clear. There's nothing distracting you, but you still get this little bit of beautiful, like just fun artwork who Joe is behind her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying not to be distracting from asking. No, this is perfect. But what I really want to do is like. <laughs> That's exactly how she is when I take her picture <laughs> and I love it. Okay. Another thing we can talk about real quick is lighting. Lighting is really important when it comes to, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this. Is this... You can flip the camera so you can oh, see Oh, that, that would be way easier. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. So another really important thing is your lighting. Sometimes you can't help it, especially if you're like you're in a dark room at night and you only have a lamp. That's a little bit harder to use, but you can use it. But during the day, especially bright days like this and you're inside under shade, it's actually amazing light. And we're also in a perfect place because there's white walls, so it really really looks nice in here but using window light is really good so i would almost always if i have good natural light like outside window light coming in i would use that over any fluorescent or lights inside so here let's come back in this room so right now joe actually asked me before starting this video she's like do you want me to turn the lights on and i was like no don't Natural light is so much more beautiful. There's still plenty of light in here to work with. So this is just, and it also keeps it um, the same colored light. So I don't know if you've ever noticed, but light has different color. So outside light is a really blue light because the blue sky, it's reflecting off the sky. It's blue, it makes it a little bit bluer. Uh, and then at night when you're using like your lamp by your bed, it's a really orange or yellow light. It's, they're different lights. Or like candlelight is very warm and um, orangey. Well, sometimes when you mix those lights and a lot of inside lights have typically more of a yellower or orangey look and then you mix the outside window light you get this blue and orange look and like you think oh creative or oh fancy no it really just looks kind of messy so if there's good light in a room almost always I will turn off the inside lights especially when I'm taking photos and just use the window light um, it gives it a much more cleaner more even colored light and it's just this place has great light already and I'm great with a little bit dimmer of a place. So now let's turn the light on real quick to show the difference. I'm hoping there'll be a difference. Okay, so it's not horrible. Well, cause they're still like bright fluorescent. Yeah, yeah, okay, so this is not the best, <laughs> um, not the best Hold example. Here. come back, go back in here. Okay, it's not the best example cause there's also amazing huge windows here, which really help. So right now, you're using, okay, so I'm under her little light in the uh, hallway. And so you get this light that's really, really warm, but then you have this really, really blue light back here. So I, this mixture of light does not typically look good. Uh, so I would almost always turn lights off. You can just go on and turn them back off. Okay. Turn lights off and just use window light. And another thing with window light in here might not work as much. Yeah, and here's, honestly, this place is such a great lit place naturally that's a little hard to show this. But typically, um, when you're facing, when the, all the wind, light is coming from your back, this is all blown out. Here, you might be able to get it in here because it's still direct sun a little bit. Yeah. 
These just have white walls, so it like reflects oh. really well. What I'm seeing here is because she has white walls all around me, even though all the light is coming into my back, it is hitting the wall that's in front of me and then reflecting back on me, so it actually looks pretty nice still. Um, but a lot of times that won't be the case. And so having that a ton of backlight can make this, the front look really dark. So if you turn and you get all that natural light onto you, or even from an angle, you get that nice side light. Um, using that window light and just placing your subject, if you have the control over it, um, in front of the good light, which window light is always, almost always amazing light. Okay, um, let's think, what else? Um, any questions so far for the few of you that are watching live? Please send them my way. Um, oh, another thing is angles. And I'm saying, want to talk about this because one of our, um, the challenges? one scavenger of the challenge, yeah, scavenger hunt challenge things, uh, is going to be talking about angles. We're going to be pushing you hopefully to do some more angles. So, uh, one angle think of, okay, so let's start over when we look at a scene just from our standard we're all I know, different heights, but Typically, we are seeing the same thing. Here, what if I sit down and pretend I'm sewing? There you go. Okay. Perfect. It's better when there's a subject. Oh, look, and she's going perfectly where the light is. Oh, do I need to move away? No, this is, she sat perfectly. So I'm going to turn this around. So she sat, here's the window, all the light coming onto her. <laughs> That's perfect. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so me, this is my height. I am just here. This is like just the basic view if I just walked up and looked at her. This is probably the basic view a lot of people would get, which that's still, you can still take a good photo this way. That's not a wrong decision, but think about other angles because when you can get a different angle, it shows the same thing that everyone's seeing, but a different perspective. Suddenly it becomes a much higher quality image because you are now showing someone a different angle that they don't typically see. So one that's gonna make it more interesting. So this is the angle everybody would walk up and see. Well, try, I'm gonna stand on one of your seats. Try coming from right above. This won't work all the time, but this definitely gives a different angle than what you typically see. So if I like zoom in, you pretend like you're putting the thing through there. Yeah, like, <laughs> like that's just going to be something different. Or try getting right below her, like really focus in of like her hands or the material or something like doing like actually there you go <laughs> focusing it on something making it a little more interesting I don't know what you can see no you're that's great <laughs> all of you so that was perfect um so making it a little more interesting by just getting different angles get down low get up high this one again is not a bad angle but it's just what everyone is used to seeing so if you want to be a little more interesting get lower or get higher does that make sense or get to the side. So all this nice light coming in to the side, now behind her is a little bit darker and in front of her is a little bit lighter. So getting that really, that side light really highlights her and then the background kind of falls off a little bit into the darkerness. The darkerness. The darkerness, that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly, that's perfect. Okay, um, let me think. What's, do you have that list I sent you? Um, oh, here, I've got it. I'm gonna just go over the list uh, to make sure I'm tap, um, touching on everything. Well, and it, what about if you're taking pictures outside? Like. Yeah, okay. Do you wanna step outside real quick? Yeah, we'll see it. We'll just make sure that the connection stays there. Okay. I don't know if it'll switch over to, we'll lose my wire. So in here, before we go outside real quick, in here the light is, pretty even like you can see me I, I mean no matter where I'm really turning the light stays pretty even over my face uh, because one you got all these huge windows and then you have all these white walls that are reflecting so it balances out the light there's no hard shadows but when we go outside you'll see really hard shadows so let's just is there anyone on live okay when we go outside if you lose us just in the comments tell us I don't know if we'll know if you lose us. <laughs> we won't go far we'll just like literally step right outside Hopefully. So now 
you'll see really, really bright. Um, and then you'll see Joe, who's in the shade. So you can see me, she looks much better because she's in the shade and it's all really even. But me, I've got like these hard shadows over me. Uh, I'm squinty, just not the best. So I typically, hard light like this is not the worst to do, but if I have control over what I'm taking a photo of, like if I'm taking a portrait of Joe, I am not gonna st stick her in the light like this. I'm going to probably just keep her in the shade. Okay, there's not, here, let's go around them. Do you think it'll go around the building? Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> oh, trash cans, perfect. This is a perfect, <laughs> <laughs> here, we'll use the wall. We'll just use the plain wall. So um, this, here, come stand in the sh uh, sun. So this, yeah, really, really bright. You see all these really hard shadows. You see like on her nose, it's just super bright, but her eyes are dark. Like it's just, try to stay away if you can of those super hard, hard light like that. Now step into the shade. Suddenly, look, we're still outside, but she took literally two steps back and now, She's in the shade and she doesn't have any of that hard light on her. So now she looks super even. Like the light on her looks really, really even. So much, so much better than the super hard light. Okay, now you wanna try that one that we did with you standing yeah. in the road? Yeah. Okay, so another composition real quick and talking about angles. Here, come a little closer to me. Keep coming a little more. Okay, so say she's... I know, I will try not. I'll try not to. Okay, so the lighting in this is not the best. That's not really what we're looking at right now. We're looking at composition. So this is just me standing normal taking this photo. Okay, there's I'm so there's, I'm photo taken. Yeah. So there is so much distracting around here. Like right behind her head are these cars, this building, trees, like everything. Like this is not a good image right here. But say the light was perfect out here if i literally just get a little bit lower then suddenly i just put her head in really an empty space so like yeah behind her body you can see it but that's okay i'm really looking at the sub like the main subject which is her head and putting just literally bending down three feet two feet now I have emptied out the space around her head, which makes it a much better image than this. Her head gets lost. This, her head just became found. <laughs> <Say that. laughs> okay, we'll go back in to make sure we've got this. So really hard light. Now back to really soft light. Um, I'm gonna look at the list real quick. Okay, so uh, I'm actually gonna use this real quick. Um, so I said, what, the ironing board is your subject? no, okay. you can just move the ironing board. Okay, so while she's moving that, I said for portraits, like basically how I'm framing myself right now, um, I'm not doing this where I've got all this space above me. My eyes are pretty much around the third of the top of the photograph. Uh, so I am now going to switch it up and say, it doesn't always have to be at the third top. I'm gonna switch the camera. So, uh, I kind of wish I could turn the camera. Does this work? Oh, it, <laughs> it just told me not to. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so I'm gonna back it up a little. So for this shot, pretend there's no boxes behind her. Okay, so for the wow, this is this is fascinating. I've never done a live video, if you can't tell. Okay, so for this one, what I would do, so her eyes are pretty much in the like middle of the image now, which I know I just said don't do, but this is a different situation because it's not. I'm not just taking a photo of her. I'm also wanting this above her, so I backed up a little and then. I put her pretty much in the middle, but I still gave enough room for up here. So for this example, it's okay that she, her head is in the middle because it's I'm not just taking a picture of her. Now I'm also wanting to incorporate what's behind her. And to do that, I had to lift it up a little bit. So again, like I said, there's always gonna be exceptions to the rule and that would definitely be an exception. Okay, um, capturing mirrors, okay. 
Let's think. Let's go in here. I've got a mirror back there. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. Go um, behind that purple door. Sweet. Behind purple door number one. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the little things is... That door's not purple. That's oh, I guess it is purple a little bit. <laughs> oh, I didn't even, I didn't even actually look at the colors. <laughs> oh, like right here. Okay, perfect. Here's a mirror. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's a not a movable mirror, which is fine. I'm totally probably making them sick by doing this. Okay. Ooh. Um, let me think. I'm, the only reason I'm using this mirror is because I was trying, um, for one of the uh, scavenger hunt things, I just threw something fun in there, like use a mirror to add some sort of creativity. And the reason I love mirrors or honestly anything that's reflective is because you can get such unique things with them. Um, let me see here. Actually, hey, if we just step outside, your windows are super reflective. So sorry, we're gonna go back out. Turn it the opposite way from how you think. Oh, gosh. Wow. That was a little complicated. Okay. So, right here. See? Look. That's a reflection. That is not actually Joe. So, I'm going to turn it around. So, there's Joe. There's the reflection. Like yeah. <laughs> here, come over by the your Be Create Bowl. Because that's just fun. Um, so, back out just a little. Okay, so this, this is really scrappy job of showing this. Um, actually, go out a little bit further that direction. I'll tell you when to stop. Keep going. Keep going. Now, go this way. Nope, sorry, other way. I forgot. It's backwards. Okay, right there. There you go. Perfect. Okay, so this, what I was talking, when I'm talking about using mirror, like, there she is right there. But I, it's just kind of fun because you still get the make do, but you still like you get her. It just kind of makes it kind of fun or backing up and getting like a double reflection. That reflection just makes a photo a little bit more interesting. Okay, Joe, come a little bit closer. Keep coming in. Keep coming. Ooh, let's get you in. Come over this way a little more. There you go. So you're completing the shake. Oh, no, go back into the light. <laughs> not go over yeah <laughs> I don't know I'm just playing around now but this is really what I would do if I was um trying to figure out something like just trying to be creative somehow using those reflections just give something a little more interesting uh to a shot or even if you just turn and just get the reflection sometimes it looks kind of fuzzy but to me that can be pretty creative so just using mirrors or reflections I bet there's some sort of commentary on social distancing that yeah yeah <laughs> seriously <laughs> that's so true that'd be a perfect shot for that okay let's go back in okay um okay lamp light I want to talk about artificial light it might be a little difficult to do in here only because there's so much natural light right now. Here, but here. let's just talk about if we're... Um, but my lamp's not very bright. Okay, I'm going to switch it. There you go. Yeah, I mean, I'll <laughs> just okay, let's pretend it's a dark room <laughs> and, and there's, no, there's no natural light coming in. So if you literally just have a lamp or one light source in a room... Think about how that light is hitting your subject. So right now, actually, that's pretty good because you get su you get this defined line. Um, turn a little bit more this way. There you go, oh, right there. See, right now, it's not so good because no. you get a little bit on her cheek, a little bit on her nose, and then all this. It just does not look good. So have your subject Tyler turn. Tyler Banks taught me to find the light. There you go. <laughs> Do you all watch America's Next Top Model? Anybody? Anybody? <laughs> Perfect. So just hone your Tyra Banksness. So find the light. Um, and then, so see how her lights, her face is mostly facing in. Turn a little bit towards me. Now go a little bit closer to the light. Oh, so like lean in. There you go. So right now, why I did this is because I did like this perfect little split in her face. So you get this nice side light. Um, or you can move the camera and now turn more into the light. See, I can move this and literally use all of that light and then fill her face with it. 
So that is also good. But like this, now turn towards me. Like that, Creepy. not so much. I mean, we got some light in here, so it doesn't work as well. But basically, wherever that light source is, use it. Um, come a little closer to me. Right there, that's no good. Do like two steps back so the light's hitting more of your face. Keep going more. There you go. See? Oh, gosh. <laughs> so turn the turn light up a little bit so you see more of it. Oh, like that. Yeah, up that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sweet. So just like backing her up a little bit allowed more of that light to come onto her face other than when she was closer to me. You see, like, she just lost all the light. And you got to pretend like there's no other light in this room. So use that light. And even you get closer to the light source and then turn. So, like, right there, the light is not in the image anymore, but it's still filling her face. Once I get the light in the image and I start turning it, uh, that starts to look a little bit worse. So, honestly, just take a lamp and go around a subject and see what that light looks like as it falls over their face. So, you definitely can use not-so-great light. Um, oh, we've got a question. Overhead ceiling lights, how to use. Okay. Good question. Here, let's this one but this is still fluorescent let's see what the light is like back here okay or maybe even in my other storage because this yeah this is like would that be yeah bad? yeah like here in the bathroom yeah no this is probably like a more standard um okay so this is a probably more standard like if you're in a home you're gonna have probably a light source that's not Can so great this? I feel like I should well now say, i can <laughs> Y'all, this isn't trash. <laughs> really? Can't tell. It's fabric scraps that we'll use for an Ottoman class that's coming up. Ooh. How to make your own Ottoman. Fancy. So, that's all it is. It's not trash. Okay. Okay. Proceed. So this room is actually pretty difficult, not going to lie, because you've got this light and you've got, wow, they are two different completely yeah. bold. Like this is super warm, super cold. So honestly, this is some lights like this you're just gonna struggle with there's gonna be some rooms that are just really very difficult to use um that's okay because ultimately lighting is important but it's also not does not have to be what makes a photograph good or not it can help make a photograph good but the emotion what you're capturing sometimes will overshadow bad lighting or not the most overshadow bad lighting. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was good oh be careful in here um so it also depends on what you're shooting if you're just taking a picture of you know a, a plant or something then yeah you're gonna probably want some really good lighting but if you're taking pictures of like your kids or your spouse or your best friend that you're just trying to get some, like there's something great going on, like a great emotional, like you're having so much fun and you just want to remember the, the time. To me, it's more important to just take the image in whatever light you have than making it perfect because perfect doesn't always have to mean technically perfect. It's just about capturing moments. At least that's how I see it. So in here, let's try to do this. Go up all the way back to the wall. So because the light is up there, I want to put as much uh, better light onto her. See, this is pretty difficult because if you look under her, it kind of looks like we're in a cell, like a jail, a jail cell right now. Um, you can see this light, the shadow under her, because the light is coming straight down and hitting her at, on, like, this is not the best angle because you just see that shadow right under her. Um, but keep walking out. So watch the shadow as it moves. Keep coming. It's just getting right. Okay, so back up just a little bit. Right there uh, is definitely not as good because you just see this light hitting straight down on her face, which now look up to the light. Keep looking up. Like it's one thing if she's looking up. Yeah, if she's looking up to the light, that's a little bit different because all that light is hitting her. Now keep walking towards me. Okay, so right now you can see the light color is changing because we go from the really blue light to this really warm light. So now it's really blue behind her, but the further she walks towards me, the more yellow she gets because it's switching lights. Wow, we should probably, <laughs> I wonder if there's any other way to like use different light. Um, but yeah, this is kind of hard. You're probably just gonna have to deal with this sort of light in this room that there's no natural light. You only have 
these really odd lights. Um, you're really just gonna have to work with it. I would, uh, I would probably suggest not being right under a light, but trying to be as far away from the light as possible. So back up again. That's why I backed her up to the wall because now she's not right under the light. She is as far as she can because the wall is stopping her. So she's getting as much light actually hitting her face as possible. Other than here. Does it make a difference in the corner? Yeah, probably the corner. But like oh. it's this, see, you can see it change on my face. So now I'm up to the wall. So I get all of this light and my face is up just a little bit to get as much light on my face. You're going to get some weird shadows on here, but you'll just, you can't really help all of that. But the further I walk... And the closer I get to under the light, you can start seeing these shadows under my eyes and see how it just changes. But now it's switching into the warm light because I'm moving beyond the blue light and walking towards the warm light. So that's not bad. You're still gonna get all this blue around you. But now that warm light is hitting my face. And then you can see it just changing all the time. Wow. Um, oh, shooting, okay, someone asked. Shooting subjects from below help? Um, well, let's try it. So let's switch it. So here, actually come closer. <laughs> the only problem with this, exactly. <laughs> exactly. The, the problem with shooting below is most people, uh, it's just not the best angle because you're just getting all of their chin. And then if they look down, then you're gonna get all this still chin. Um, so yeah, shooting from below does work with some things. Uh, I would say just try it. I mean, it does not hurt to try. I am one of those people where, where I'll go into a situation and literally try all the angles. I'll get above, I'll get below, I'll get to the sides. I'll move them around. I'll move the light around if I can move the light around. Um, so yeah, you just have to be careful shooting below because that is almost always not the best angle for a lot of people. Um, so that's a little more difficult. Would you shoot above? Like if I. Yeah. Like... So this would definitely, if she, <laughs> if she, if she were like, I don't know if it's like a little kid or something sitting on the floor. If I was playing with my not trash. There you go. There. <laughs> yeah. See, that would be much better light because at least it's a lot more solid. You're still getting these weird shadows, but they're not but horrible. It's black reflection. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is, I hope this is entertaining you guys. Um, but yeah, looking up and having the light hit your face, yes, would be a much better option than like down here. And then you get these weird shadows under your eyes. So yes, definitely. But that doesn't always work with what you're trying to do. Um, so it's just kind of like a give and take. Some lighting is just honestly going to be bad and that's okay. Um, if you can control the lighting, great. Like in here, is there a way to turn one of those off or no? no. Okay. Okay. Let's turn them both off. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now it is legit just a dark room. So that does not work. Um, okay. But let's just keep that off. Turn this hall light on. Okay. Oh, you have to go way over there to do it. Oh, wow. Okay. So now I'm in the hallway with this light. Um, this is the room we just came from. It's now dark. So using just this hall light right there, you can see, watch my face again as I move. So the light's still ahead of me. I'm moving towards the light and then just start watching the shadows on my face. You can start seeing shadows underneath as I'm getting right under it. Really bad shadows. It's like highlighting my forehead. Bad shadows, bad shadows. Uh, the only reason the light's getting better at this moment is because I'm now using the light from out I know, there. I wish I could hide it. Here, do I make a shadow on it if I fill it in like this? <laughs> <laughs> so that's why. But if there was a door there and there's nothing there, then suddenly all the light would just be behind me. So if we're just paying attention to this light, then getting in front of the light. So the light is right there. I... I'm using that light to light my face. I am not standing right under it because when I'm standing right under it, all it does is highlight my um, forehead and give me shadows. So just move a step back and then suddenly I'm great. Now let's turn these lights off. Um, 
So right now, see, I, my face got super blue. And okay, now she turned it off. So if you've got a hallway like this and you have in your home and your business or wherever, and you've got that light on that's really yellow, but then you've got this good natural light, turn off that light that's really yellow. And then you stand in the doorway or I don't know, anywhere. So the reason I'm wanting to stand here, oh, this light came on. Hold on. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. So now it's all the same light. There are no lights on in here. I'm just using the outside light. So by doing this, it's super smooth light because I have all these windows lighting up my face. I'm standing in the hallway and the reason I'm standing in the hallway is because it's lighting up my face really nice, but it's still giving me a little bit of darkness behind me. I can even step back even a little more. Um, just to darken it a little bit more behind me because that really emphasizes me, especially if I'm just taking a portrait of myself or anyone else, like having me be the total subject in the one where all your eyes are going to is me, then that is, I am for sure telling you what the subject is. It is me, it is my eyes, everything. And I'm, you're not distracted by all the stuff in the back. Um, so turning off lights, using that nice front light, and then getting in like a darker situation where you just use that nice window light and then letting everything fall off dark behind you really helps highlight you uh, the most or whatever you're trying to take a picture of. It doesn't have to be you or a person. Um, so thank you for the questions. That was great. Um, yeah, you just gotta be careful because like, see when you take it from below, it just kind of looks weird. Take it from up high. Here, let's turn. Uh, like is nice, but then you're gonna still get distracting stuff behind you. So you have to be a little careful for that. Hey, this is a great background right here. Also look at good background. So this one is a pretty good, like consistent, non-distracting. I mean, it's like colorful and it's fun, but it's not super distracting. Unlike, so I found this wall, which has like all of them perfectly lined up versus over here, suddenly it just got a little weird because, okay, it's all lined up over here, but then right above me is empty, and so it looks a little odd. Um, so if you've got the choice between something being like a solid background by something being super consistent versus something that's like, oh, that kind of looks a little out, kind of looks like I'm wearing, I don't know, it just looks odd. So just be careful. Um, with that just try and stay with a more consistent background. Does that make sense? Okay um, Let's take some pictures of just like a thing. So instead of a person What can we take a picture of? Machines, I've got a plant. Let's do I've this got, mug Okay, my coffee mug. Yeah, we're gonna do her coffee mug Okay, so but with not you in it. So Okay, we're just going to take a picture now. Well, I'm going to show you um, of my very cold coffee. <laughs> very cold. Yeah, we need to just fake some steam coming off of it. Okay, let's go into this room. Basically, if you're like, oh, I had this amazing morning coffee and now I want to do something with it or take a cool picture, let's actually go in this room. And you're trying, you're just kind of seeing me as I'm figuring out how to take a fun picture of this. I like all these plants. So here, let's put it in between the plants. And then, mm -hmm. sorry, I'm kind of probably making you go crazy by doing this. Okay. So if I'm trying to take a picture of this mug, I, again, this is super simple, simple, um, but just giving you an example of how I'm setting this up. One, I'm not taking it from up here. I'm actually getting down on its level. Actually, I'm going to bring it closer to me. I'm getting down on its level so that um, it, it's, it's not just like the normal, like I'm looking at a coffee cup. To me, that's just, that's boring. It's what everyone sees. So get down on its level and then look at your background and see what it's doing. You don't want it to be too distracting. Um, right now it's not super distracting. I might move it over. Actually, I might move this back. 
you know, just that it's, it's something. This is not the best of the best. Um, here, we'll move these completely out of the way. And just using, I don't know, I'm just playing around here. This is exactly how I do it, just play around. Something where it's not distracting. So instead of doing this, where this kind of, you know, like the background hits this, maybe lifting up just a tad bit. So I'm still, it's on the same level, but I gave a divide right there so that they're not interfering with each other. Sometimes that interference is a little distracting. So just bringing up a little and making sure there's that divide can really help separate your subject and background. Does that make sense? Hope so. Okay. Well, that's one thing, talking about separating the subject from the background is one thing that I struggle with when I take pictures at McDo because it is so, can be so colorful and because I am just using my phone, like I don't, I can't play around a lot with the depth of field. Yes. So like, like you were just showing in front of the fabric wall, sometimes it's not helpful to take a picture in front of that because the, it's so bright in the background that you lose the subject. Yeah, actually that's a great point, especially because we're talking about iPhone photography and not a camera. So a real camera, you can control that depth of field and depth of field is what's in focus and what's not. So for a lot of portraits, you see people's faces are in focus, but then everything behind them is completely out of focus. And that really makes you focus on the person and not the background. Well, with iPhones, it's really difficult to do that, actually, um, because you're not in control of it. You're, it's just all automatic. In portrait mode, if you have a phone that has portrait mode, that does give you a little yeah. bit of control. Yes, for sure. That's actually that's another thing I was going to talk about here. I'm going to see if I can do this. You want me to hold your phone? Um, well, I'm going I'm oh, to put it in. Oh, yeah, I'm going to take it. <laughs> okay, so this is just, no, this is going to be kind of difficult. Just deal with me, guys. Um, this, actually, let's go closer to the wall so we don't get all this table. Okay, right there. Okay, so here, if I'm taking this photo, this is just normal. I took out my phone, and there we go. Well, if I turn it, like, but right here, this be grateful in the back is still pretty in focus. Like she's in focus and the background's in focus, which is what she was talking about when she said it can be distracting. So portrait mode can help that. You do have to be careful with portrait mode because it can be kind of weird sometimes. Okay. So now if I take this photo, it's much better. So you can see the be grateful is now blurred out a lot more, that is great. But sometimes that doesn't work all the time. Um, but if you do have portrait mode, definitely doing this and having good light in a very distinct subject works. But with portrait mode, you have to have a distinct subject. You can't just, uh, oh, I'm taking a picture of this table and food and then just put it on portrait mode and expect it to know what your subject is. You really have to be much closer and really distinct. And that's why it's portrait mode because I, it detects people and like the outline of people's a lot better, typically. Um, but another thing, actually going back to this coffee cup, you can kind of fake depth of field with iPhones, even without portrait mode, um, with small things and by getting close to them. Um, so, you're not going to be able to really see it too much on live because live doesn't do it very well. Um, but so the closer I get to this, okay, you want me to hold this phone? yeah, that's actually better. Thanks. Okay. So out here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. out here, uh, the, the cup is in focus, but then also the background, but the closer I get, the closer I get, you see, I didn't really do anything, but suddenly the background's out of focus. Do you see it? A little, you yeah, we can see a little. Okay. Back here, Look. everything's in focus. Mm -hmm. Way up close, suddenly the background went a little bit more out of focus. So that's about the only way to fake, without portrait mode, fake getting, um, fake getting a depth of field. Um, so the closer you get to something, 
the more out of focus the background. The further you get away from something, the more the background and the subject are going to be in focus. Does that make sense? Okay. Any other questions? I like all the questions. Um, I'm looking at a little... Okay, um, we can talk about, uh, so one thing we talked about was making sure around your subject is nothing sticking out or something really distracting. To take it a step further, you can try using things uh, to naturally frame. So not literally hold up a frame and frame them, but using things around you to naturally frame someone. Um, I'm just looking around to see what I could do. Like a doorway. Like, yeah, no, but like as basic as a doorway, you're totally right. Like using a doorway to naturally frame someone, um, is great. Or, um, let me look, let me look, let me look. Man, I know there's gotta be some framing. Well, what if I was sitting, like if I was sewing? Oh. The machine, like, would... That yeah different. okay so she's talking about like using this hole yeah yeah so like if okay so this is a real close-up her face is not what's in focus I'm basically focusing on her fingers but by doing this I would also take this horizontally not vertically but it's okay but I'm using this machine to basically frame her fingers so that's like a natural frame or um Come sit on the other side of that real quick. Like over here. Yeah. So just pretend you're sitting there doing work. Yeah. So move that cup. Okay. So again, so again, this is the live video is not the best, but even this. So if she's just sitting there working on something and there's this above her, then suddenly I have used this to help frame her. Don't do this where it's like cutting into her head. You gotta be careful again, not letting things be distracting. So moving down and then putting her inside of this little natural frame just kind of helps frame her a bit. It's just something different or unique. Um, or I'm trying to think what else we could do to frame. Uh, it's not as easy as I thought it would be in here. Well, and sometimes outside, I think, like, with the picture, yeah. it's a little easier. Yeah. Actually, let's go back into this room. I'm going to show you with the plants. So, there's these plants, and I actually saw it just a little bit ago. Um, I'm going to use this coffee cup again. Well, it's a different one. <laughs> um, but this is super simple. I, this is not exactly how I would do this shot but i just want to show you so i just want to show you framing so even as basic as this is your subject and then having this frame around you so i'm actually thinking like man if you're outside and there's like a tree like putting someone or your subject right under that like limb don't put it where you know it's like this where it's like all being conflicted you know like the backgrounds all being muddied into it but turning to the side and doing like this so that you still get this nice little frame above the subject, but the subject definitely has its own place in the image. Like it is, it's, there's not much around it. Like you really uh, separated it from it and then the, the background, but this background has like this natural curve of the plants behind it kind of framing the subject. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then, Joe back with her coffee. I'm not drinking it. It's freezing cold. <laughs> cold coffee. I'm going to get this coffee cup and put it away. Okay. Joe, can you think of anything else? Um, Just a, like a quick tip. Well, one thing that you had talked about. So, Ashley did a class before. Um, and when you were talking about the rule of thirds, you were also talking about movement, like yeah. movement into, into the, the frame, photo. outside of the frame. Yes. Um, so if your kids are, if you're taking pictures of kids out running around playing, you yes. know, like that kind of stuff is helpful. Okay, here, we're going to switch it and I'm going to draw. Okay. Because I'm a wonderful drawer. Okay. 
So what she's talking about movement, here is the image. Actually, let's do the scene. It's a kid running this direction, you know, with the basketball and just, you know, I don't know, or football, throwing a football to someone. That's football. And I can like, totally see it. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, here's a field. Again, water. Uh, he's running on water. <laughs> Jesus is throwing a football. <laughs> oh, gosh. So because all the action, and you're with the camera this way. Okay. With all the action, the action is going this direction. So what you want to do is frame it where the action is going into the photograph. So you don't hug them up so the line's not like right there. You give them a little bit of room behind them, but then you leave more room over on this side because a person is naturally going to look at this image. Their eyes are going to go to the person. They're going to see that motion of the ball, and their eyes are going to automatically and subconsciously follow that ball. So you want to lead them into the photograph. If you were to take the photograph like this, and there's not really much behind them, well, suddenly someone's going to look at this image and immediately look off your image so that they've now missed the image. Like th that's not going to be interesting to them because it's subconscious. They're going to see it and then move off. So if you focus it where it gives them room to look, well, then suddenly you're going to keep them on your photograph longer. So if you've got a kid like running, um, whichever way they're going, give a little bit more room on that, uh, that, that side, basically. So it's, yes, it's a still image, but you got to think in motion. You got to think like, oh, they're, they're moving into that. So I want to give a little bit more room for them to move into the photograph. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, if there's any, or if anyone's just looking, so someone's fate, oh gosh, no, I'm going to have to use Joe for this. Okay. I can't draw that. <laughs> Like, I was t totally just going to try and draw that. Okay. So look off that direction. So if Joe's like, oh yeah, there we go. Like a pondering. Yes, you could go straight on or you could put her a little bit more to the side. So it's not like you didn't cut her off like that, but you didn't, you didn't also do that. Um, just put this hand like in a, yeah. <laughs> So, yes, you could – so, yeah, act, let's sit on the couch. Let's do something completely different. Just sit and kind of lean on this side, just like you're chilling. Where's my cold coffee? Yeah. Yeah, so you could just frame her like this. Um, but, okay, the whole reason I put her a little bit on this side, like I didn't do this. I Like I did say you can put a person straight in the middle. But I didn't do this because I just cut off her legs. So I moved it over just a little bit so her legs are in. you got to be careful with limbs. You want to try not to cut off limbs unless you are purposely cutting them off. And I'll get to that in a second. But I don't want to just like cut a foot off. So I gave room, but then there's still plenty of room over here. And then she is just, well, if, especially if she's looking straight at me, this is a great image just like that. Or if she's looking to the side... Um, I still wouldn't cut it off. I would actually get in closer and be more purposeful about it because I don't want to do this because then it, you just kind of cut her body off. So look actually the other direction a little bit. So if I do this now, she is way more over on this third of the photograph because I'm having her, her eyes are looking into the photograph. So I gave more room over here for her eyes to look into. Again, I didn't do this where I cut off her face and left way too much room. I just gave, put her over on this side just a little bit. Now look directly at me. Now I can get in even closer and now she's back to just the center. Like this, she's not looking either way. So she doesn't even like, I just want to put her dead center. Like, I don't want to do this because then suddenly she's hugging this side and there's too much blank space. And now I'm putting her dead center because she's looking right at me. Look back that way again. Your turn your head just a little bit. There you go. But because of this, now I want to move over just a little bit because now she is looking this direction. Does that make sense? Okay. Now what we're talking about cutting off limbs, going and stand back up. Okay, cutting off limbs. I would say, and again, um, there's always rules to be broken. So remember that with just anything. Ex yeah, just really anything. There's rules. They can be broken. But for a general rule, stick with this until you really know what you're doing. Because we're most 
of us probably aren't trying to win any photography contest. Exactly, exactly. So stick with stick with the basics. So right now I have her whole entire body. Do I and, need to stick my lens out? No. no. Oh well, I guess for right now, if someone just likes natural, there you go. Um, so right now, have her whole body. If I want to just get from her waist up, there, do that. Um, but I'd see at the bottom, I didn't cut off her hand. Now, right now, I just cut off a little bit of her hand. I can't do this. I, I just cut off a little bit of her hand, and now it just looks weird. So I would either want to definitely cut off her hand and just focus on her face or get her hand. You either want to cut someone, and this sounds weird cutting them. You want to crop either, if you're going to crop their arm at all, crop like in the middle of sections. Don't crop at joints. Joints usually look a little odd. So crop in the middle of their forearm, yeah. is that what it's called? Instead of, <laughs> Instead of at the wrist or the elbow. Or cut at, or crop at the middle of your my bicep bicep exactly <laughs> um be careful cropping at the shoulder because then it just looks like a floating head so i would definitely if you're going to do a headshot give them a little so bit of their chest yeah a little bit of their chest and arm or give them middle of the waist not in the elbow just like middle of the arm or give them the whole hand or give them the whole body also feet okay so i'm blocking Ooh. um i'm so pretend my hand is like the bottom of the photograph um, I don't chop off right just their feet. Don't chop at their ankle. Chop at like mid calf or mid thigh. Don't chop just the feet. Either keep all the feet or chop mid calf or mid thigh. Waist, you probably could do fine, but you have to be careful again because of hands. So typically that's why you want to do mid thigh. But yeah, if their like hands are up there, I actually probably still do a little mid thigh. Does that make sense? Does that help? You just got to be careful chopping. And again, don't chop the heads off. Cropping. I probably should totally say cropping and not just chopping. Does that make sense? It does. It makes sense to me. <laughs> Any other thoughts on what we've said before? I don't think so. I think this is great. I hope this is helpful. I hope this gives you guys, we'll post the, all the challenge things. Yeah. And hopefully it will just give you something fun to do today. Yes. And... And I can come up with the hashtag. Yeah, and then I can critique them if you want or give you tips. Um, reach out to me. I'm great with just helping you take some better photos. Okay, so thanks for hanging in with us uh, this whole time. I don't even know what time it is because Facebook doesn't tell me. So I feel like this was long, but I had fun and I hope you had fun. Tomorrow is watercolor um, and I'll go back and... Well, I'm not going to promise I'll give timestamps for this because we covered a lot and it might be... A lot. So I will put this on YouTube though. Um, so I will let people know now that they're at the end of the video. You can watch it on YouTube in faster speed. <laughs> and that might be, be helpful too if you're trying to get through the whole thing. So um, thanks for tuning in. I think I already said tomorrow is watercolor. And we'll see you then. Bye.